Member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. I move that leave be given to introduce a bill entitled An Act to Promote Public Safety, Public Peace and Safety by Regulating Late Night Dance Events, and that it now be read for the first time. The purpose of this bill is to regulate parties known as raves. Some members may be aware of this latest dance trend and the easy access of the drug ecstasy, which is often found in use at these raves. Since we advanced the statistics from the coroner's office, which was up until October of 1999, nine young people had died. To rave or not to rave? That's the question. Where did the bad reputation come from? The death of a Toronto youth prompted the city to ban all raves on public property. City councillor Frances Nunziata once supported that decision, but she changed her tune after she went to a rave. These parties are just parties for kids, and I think that politicians are overreacting.
my question is, is when are the real experts going to be called in for consultation? And that's us, the people who, who attend to these things, the young people who know the scene, know what's going on, and also want to keep people from being harmed and unsafe. And when are, I mean, I mean, we are the real experts on this, and when are we going to be called in to There's some very critical issues about the whole drug scene, and it isn't so much a rave's issue, and it isn't so much a kid's issue, it isn't so much uh, the rave uh, uh, activities. It has a whole lot to do with ensuring that those of us who are entrusted with this own res responsibility of providing public safety are not held uh, accountable for the things we can't control we can manage, it can't resolve. And that's why the protocol needs to be revisited. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have a group of ravers that are coming to help the Toronto Police Services. And look at what they're doing. The, this is community policing at its best. What do you think the biggest misconception? That, that, that we're all a bunch of crackheads. They all think that. Like, I'll walk down the street and people will just kind of move away from me because I got my beads on and stuff. And I'm just like, hey, how's it going? You know, they're just like all afraid because they, media portrays us as a bunch of druggies who lay around on concrete floors vomiting. Attitudes have changed. I grew up in a community where if you were a 16, 17 year old male and you weren't driving around town in the mid 50s listening to Elvis with a brown stubby between your legs as you drove the car, there was something wrong with you. That's changed and it's changed for the good. But Mrs. Pupatella described a snake pit of transparent illegality in Windsor. I don't, well listen, I, we should be damn well concerned. 14 and 15 and 16 year old kids, being middle class kids, being dri driven by their unsuspecting parents to the doorstep of these pits where they're, where, they're, where they're ingesting this love, hug, bug, or whatever the hell ecstasy is called. Once again, I'm familiar with ecstasy only to the extent that I've read about it in the newspapers. References made to the uh, a uh, coroner's inquest that's taking place right now, not, a not inappropriate reference. Because really, shouldn't we be awaiting the recommendations of that jury? Shouldn't we be using that as the starting point for consideration of, I mean, why are we having this coroner's inquest? Which is expensive and that's not the issue but it has available to it uh, an, a, an array of expertise, uh, uh, a list of witnesses, obviously resulting from the tragic death of a young person here in the province. But why are we having a coroner's inquest? If we aren't prepared to await the results of that inquest and let that jury assess the evidence that was put before it, and fulfill its obligations to it, uh, make its recommendations.